in love with science as a, as a young person. You went on to study a PhD at the University of Western Ontario here in Canada. And I'm curious what your teachings and learnings and study around quantum physics taught you about philosophy and our natural world. If, you know, I was very impressed by Einstein. And uh, I want you, you know, you, you in, in impressed by Florence Nightingale, you become a healer, you, you get impressed by various kinds. You get impressed by Margaret Thatcher, then that's what you want to become. <laughs> I got very impressed uh, by Einstein, and so I wanted to be a physicist. And interestingly, I went to convents. And in convents, they had no science. Um, because the only teachers of that time used to be male and they didn't want to have male teachers. Then I changed school, I came down to Dehradun, and they couldn't find a higher math teacher, but I taught myself. They couldn't find really good physics teachers, so I'd go off um, to college teachers and spend time with them. Um, and followed, you know, I, I originally trained in nuclear physics, and I was in India's fast breeder, experimental reactor, in the period it was going critical. And of course, Canada has a very intimate relationships with India's nuclear program. You know, the first nuclear power plant in, um, in Baba is called the Kandu reactor on Canada. Um, and then it was my sister uh, who was tr training to be a medical doctor uh, when I came home for vacations and I'm showing off, you know, being in the nuclear power plant. And she asked me a few basic questions. And I can't answer a single one of them because that's not what we are taught. In physics, all you're taught is how to create a chain reaction. You're not taught about radiation. You're not taught about risks of nuclear systems. And it's become so much more common knowledge today after Fukushima. So I shifted to theoretical physics. And in theoretical physics, you know, you ask questions and my professors would say, no, 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 just solve the equations. I said, no, I'm happy to solve the equations, but I don't want to know what the equations are about. So I moved into foundations of physics. That's how I ended up in Canada and uh, at Western. And what the foundations of physics philosophy taught me for everything I do now are two principles. And I think they're very useful principles for everyone. The first is the principle of non-separability. My thesis one was a non-locality in quantum theory. And, you know, in, in mechanical physics, uh, you can only touch that mug by banging against it. It's called action by contact. And quantum theory recognizes you can have action at a distance every, because everything is related. And it's, in ecology, it's called the butterfly effect. You know, in the Amazon, a butterfly can create a storm somewhere else. And we're realizing that more and more with climate change, mm -hmm. that pollution of 200 years ago in the industrialized world, in England, in the United States, uh, melting the ice in the Arctic, in our Himalaya, glaciers are disappearing. So non-separability, interconnectedness, relationship, I think is the most important. And the second is, you know, quantum theory is about uh, non-determinism. That this mug doesn't have just the property of being there, sitting there. It's got the property of having water inside it. Um, everything has multiple values. And, uh, and in the algebra of quantum theory, it's called non-Boolean logic. There's nothing like an either or. Everything is an and. and. And therefore, the polarized dualistic thinking that has been the dominant culture of 200 years of scientific thought, in a way, quantum theory puts it aside and connects us again to indigenous cultures, ancient knowledge systems, the Upanishads and the Vedas, and suddenly you're in a different place. 